the Pali word for meditation, bhavana, means to develop. And it's one of the three ways in which we develop our discernment. The first way is by listening, reading, taking in information about the Dharma. The second is thinking about it. What makes sense? And if something doesn't make sense, how we can think about it in a way that makes it clearer. But then you actually have to develop the discernment as you try to bring the mind under control. And this way you learn a lot of lessons you don't learn from listening or thinking. But they're the really important lessons for understanding what right view is all about. We can know the theory. It can make sense. But if we don't use it, it shows that we don't really understand it. Because it's pointing right to the suffering in our hearts and saying it doesn't have to be there. And anyone with any wisdom or discernment would realize that this is a valuable teaching. We have to put it to use. And the main way of putting it to use is, as I said, to bring the mind under control. As the Buddha said, one of his categorical teachings is that skillful qualities should always be developed and unskillful qualities should always be abandoned. Now we do that sometimes, but not always, because the mind changes its direction very quickly. You can be fighting against sensual desire for a while, and all of a sudden you find yourself siding with it, and then you're back over. Off with something else, or something else. So you may know all about the Four Noble Truths and all about dependent core rising, but if you don't know how to get the mind under control, then the teaching isn't serving its use, serving its purpose, and you're not getting the most out of it. So you have to figure out there are things that you'd like to do, and you know are going to give bad results, and you have to know how to talk yourself out of doing them. Things you don't like to do but will give good results, you have to talk yourself into doing them. Now you have to use your ingenuity in talking to yourself. You can pick up some of the perceptions and ideas that the Buddha gives you. This is why it is valuable to read and to think. But the important thing is learning how to use those perceptions at the right time. They get the mind on the side of the Dharma, not on the side of its defilements. And once you're on the side of the Dharma, you have to learn how to keep it that way. That's how the mind develops. It's like planting a seed. If you put the seed in the soil and leave it there, give it some sun and some moisture, it's going to grow. But if you put the seed in, then you dig it up, and you put it someplace else, then you dig it up, then you put it someplace else, and you dig it up, it's not going to grow. So as we work with the breath, we're planting a seed. And the more consistently you can stay with the breath, the more consistently you can work on developing skillful qualities and abandoning unskillful ones, the more the good qualities in your mind have a chance to grow. And that's when you see the atta, A-T-T-H-A, of the Dhamma, its purpose, its meaning, its benefit. After all, the Buddha did teach a path, as he said. That's the overriding image of his teaching. And the path goes someplace. You don't just lie down in the path. You don't study the path. You walk the path. That's why the Buddha laid it out. And that's how we get the most benefit from it. <laughs>